If you ask the average player what they think the best edit is, they're probably going to say the peanut butter edit. It gives you a great right hand peek whilst at the same time keeping you protected, and it's probably the most common edit you'll see professional players make. However, I think it's overrated and there are way better edits that you can select. In order to actually be protected with this edit, the player has to stand in the front left area of the box. Now confirming the edit while standing anywhere else won't actually give you a right hand peek advantage, and this is the entire point of choosing this edit. To add to that, if you're close to the wall, you have to jump in order to actually be able to hit a shot, making it very difficult to aim. The most good players confirm the edit whilst on the left of the box and then use the cone they're standing on to move around and elevate themselves in order to peek, which makes your aim more consistent given you don't have to jump. However, the average player is very unlikely to have this level of awareness in their movement and often get hit in return. On top of that, you must place a floor over you and be standing on a cone so that your head bounces off of it. If you don't, you'll jump higher and your head will be exposed to the other player, defeating the point of making this peek. If you're looking for a completely impractical way to make this better, TikTok taught me that you can edit the middle two tiles of a cone to give yourself an easier jump shot. That's good for TikTok views, but it's not actually practical for fighting decent players. Now, the peanut butter edit is phenomenal for diagonal and blueprint box fighting as you're able to safely stand behind it and replace opponent's walls while jumping. However, there are a lot of angles where this also just is not the best play. Since in order to make this effective, you have to stand on the left of your box, any good player will recognize this play and counter it like Peterbot does here by pushing into the side of the wall at a diagonal angle so he is almost completely hidden from the opponent whilst he still sees the entire body of the player doing the peanut butter edit. So you have to confirm the edit when you're in the front left of the box, have a floor above your head to bounce off of, jump to a shot, and the edit is predictable. So there are a lot of situations where the peanut butter edit is just not the best choice. When done right, this edit is amazing, but it's just definitely not the best, or in my opinion, even the second best, but it's absolutely going into the must master tier. By the way, I tried to find out like the original reason why people called this the peanut butter edit, but I just kept finding videos of creators putting peanut butter on their face uh, every time they died. Ooh, that feels kind of nice. To completely contrast this, the left peanut butter edit, I don't know what it's called, but that's what we're calling it, is significantly worse. This edit nearly always gives the other player a right hand peek and doesn't in any way give you a good angle. A good example of this, Peterbot is too close to the wall when he does this edit, which just creates a 50-50 where he's chunked down to 66 HP. Had he been to the left of the box, he could have still peeked around the wall to give himself a right hand peek. In this game, this Elam was also just stolen from him, meaning had he made a better peek, this 41 Elam game could have been higher. Most players use this edit at a diagonal angle since you can easily reset the wall and it gives you full vision into the other player box. Now, if the opponent wants to run into your face, they have to jump over this edit as well, and it's possible to accidentally hurdle over this awkward edit, giving you a free shot. Probably the most common use of this is just to intentionally 50-50 when you have a health advantage, as Moss does here. Given it's so commonly used for diagonal box fighting, we're putting this into the mid tier. The most frequently done accidental edit is, of course, the door edit. Now, at first glance, you may think the door edit is entirely useless, but it has a few really useful mechanics. There's an old phasing trick you can do that most people have kind of entirely forgotten about, Whilst fighting from a diagonal angle, edit a left door into your wall. As you're spraying the opponent's wall, walk into the end of the door where it meets the opponent's wall, and as soon as the wall breaks, you'll just face straight into their box. Given most people don't know about this trick, it's hard to predict. However, once everyone remembers that it works, it's basically not going to be that useful. The door edit can also be used to replace cones and floors from above, but in reality, you're probably better off doing this over a peanut butter edit. You can also take advantage of the auto open doors feature. When a player is hugging up against the right of your wall, even a window edit will give them a right hand peek. So instead, you can actually just edit a door, which will make them automatically open it, then you can take a shot and then edit your cone to stop them firing back. You'll have the guaranteed first hit since they'll be stuck in the door opening animation, however there are very few situations where this can actually work. Overall, the door edit is awful. Let's just get the window and door edit out the way. Who's ever used this intentionally? Useless tier. Now the bottom four right is a classic edit and it's one of the highest used for a good reason. The left edge of this edit gives the user a right hand peek, assuming that they are standing on the left side of the box, and this completely blocks the opponent's vision unless they're fully up against the right of their box. Here you can see that with both players on the left of the box, Swizzy is able to see the opponent whereas the opponent has zero visibility onto him. Had he done a peanut butter edit in this scenario, he wouldn't have even been able to see the opponent at all here. And in this other scenario, Maris exits at the top of his box and pumps the opponent for big damage before blocking with a wall. Now many players here would have just ended up jumping down into the box, but Maris edits a bottom four tile to give himself a right hand peek over the left of the wall and then jumps to ensure he can see down into 
into the box, allowing him to delete the opponent. The bottom right four can also be used to cut off player's vision with the top of the edit. In this fight, after replacing the wall, Muzz goes for a top row edit. However, this would have just been 50-50. So he backs up onto the top of the ramp and then decides to do a bottom four tile. Because he's at the top of the ramp, this doesn't completely hide him from the opponent as his lower body is still visible. However, he has complete vision onto the other player. This allows him to deal a 71 damage pump shot without getting hit in return. He then does the exact same thing again before making a 50-50 edit to finish the fight. The bottom right four tile is something that some of the best players use probably more than any other edit, so there's no doubt that it's also in the must master tier. The left hand version of this edit, however, is not so good. This bottom left floor edit is mainly used when you want to fully expose the other player and you're okay with taking some damage in return. Here, an opponent is breaking out in the backside of Storm and Swizzy just edits a bottom left four to ensure he claims the wall and creates some form of opening to guarantee him the elim. Could have really done any edit in this scenario, but this is probably the easiest to do. In this clip, Vino is trying to finish the fight quickly as there's a lot of third parties around. So after trading 80 damage with the opponent, he crouches behind the cone in his box and sets up a bottom left four tile in order to expose the other player fully. Now replay lag just completely hides this, but he actually uses the cone he's on to right hand peek instead of the wall, meaning this edit selection makes a lot of sense. Like most left hand edits, it's mainly used for diagonal box fighting to create massive openings when you're already peeking behind another wall, and can be used when fighting diagonally from above as it gives you free vision onto the wall below while still giving you control over this piece. Sometimes the best edit is just the edit that's going to allow you to to hit your shots the easiest, and in this case, Swizzy, using this edit instead of a safe one, allows him to finish the fight as quickly as possible. If your aim sucks, do not do this unless the opponent is extremely low HP. Due to all this, I'm putting it in the awful tier, as you're nearly always going to be able to select a different edit for better outcomes. However, the bottom three tile left is arguably the worst edit that many pro players still have in their muscle memory. The bottom left three tile has similar uses to the top left three, which is mainly useful for diagonal box fighting. In fact, this scenario, it's exactly exactly the same, however it's probably better to build up the muscle memory for the top left 3 and not do this edit as there are still very minimal scenarios where you can use this safely. When going wall to wall, this edit gives you zero benefits, and in fact it always gives the opponent the advantage. But in this scenario, Suwizzi has the siphon medallion and the element of surprise, so he's comfortable taking a 50-50, but these are the kind of mistakes that get you punished heavily if the opponent is another pro player. You can see even Fino does this edit here, where he's able to hit a big pump shot, however when he confirms the edit, he could only see the player's lower body, and it was only because the opponent stopped swinging to the left that he was able to hit a one on one shot, all whilst Davino is fully exposed. This wasn't a bad play by means, it was obvious that the other player was going to just run out, so he just made a big wide open edit to guarantee a hit, but even a bottom left four tile would have been better here because it would have given full vision onto the other player. The only situation where this edit is viable is similar to a door, where the opponent is stacked right up against the right of your wall, and you're also on the right of your box, which will allow you to go for a toe shot. The only other upside of this edit is that it can also be used for chopping out builds, and in almost every other scenario, any other edit is better. There's no doubt this is an awful tier edit, remove it from your muscle memory. On the complete flip side however, the bottom right three is one of the best edits in the game. Now I've already covered this edit in a short, but in a ton of scenarios the bottom right three is much better than the peanut butter edit. If both players are in the center of the box, then the ridge of this edit blocks the opponent's view of your head, but gives you a nice right hand peek, meaning you don't have to jump to hit a shot. If they're up against the front left of your box, this angle is often blocked by a peanut butter edit, meaning you'll have to push out into their box to hit the opponent or jump. Your head also becomes visible while doing this and the opponent can just jump shot you back and return. However, with the bottom right three, you're still completely hidden whilst peeking and again, don't need to jump to hit the shot. This edit is not so good for diagonal box fighting or if the opponent is above you and the most famous example of this is from the 2019 Fortnite Solo World Cup as Creo from the inside of the box makes a bottom right three, giving him no vision over Booga whilst at the same time exposing his own feet, losing in the game. Regardless, max peace can be done with this edit if you know how to use it correctly. One of the most common edits that mechanical players use is the top row. Now on the face of it, this seems like an extremely 50-50 edit, and for the most part, it is, but it has a ton of versatility. A lot of the times, this is just the fastest and easiest edit to guarantee the elim. Here, Peterbot is behind an unaware opponent and opens the fight by cracking him with an 81 damage shot. Now there's no need to do anything fancy from here on, so he just grabs the wall to ensure the opponent can't and edits the top row to finish the fight off. It can also be used when you think the opponent isn't very good and you're just certain you'll win the 50-50. Here, this player was boxed up in a single wood box, 
so it's a bit of a no-brainer that any's best fighter will more than likely be able to finish this fight quickly. The situation where you're standing on a ramp with a wall to your side is also quite common. Now, most people here would edit AP and Butter, but this can be tricky to reset as you have to blueprint edit to reset, and the other player can also just walk straight into your box. Instead, Vino here edits a top row, which leaves a little corner visible to his bottom right, allowing him to reset the wall with ease. You can also crouch in front of the wall, as Reason does here, from this very old clip in Chapter 2 that I remembered about to keep completely hidden, and then jump shot to surprise the opponent. Or a better option is to use the wide edit to bait a shot out, as Vadil does here, but dodge it by crouching into the wall, and then simply uncrouch, walk back upwards up the cone, and guarantee a free hit. Overall, top row is another must-master edit, because it's by far the best 50-50 edit. You can also do this edit, but include a door. Now, you could potentially have one player phasing using the door exploit, and another spraying from behind the top row edit, but in reality, there's absolutely zero practical application for this. Literally useless. The counterpart of the top row edit is the low wall edit. Now, in a normal wall-to-wall -wall context, this edit is fairly useless. However, this has a ton of merit when it comes to pre-editing and in duo fights. One player pre-editing a six-tile wide edit, both players can spray whilst replacing, instantly damaging the player on the other side. This is also incredibly useful for blueprint editing players two tiles away from you on over a protected angle, as this leaves them fully exposed and often forces them to panic. Unlike the other edits often used for pre-editing, this one is particularly hard to replace as it has an awkward pickaxe hitbox, which frequently leads you to pickaxing a cone in your box instead of the wall itself. The only downside of this is that you have to jump over the edit, making it a little awkward to get into the other player's box if you're aggressively W keying. Regardless, this is by far the best pre-edit you can choose. There's also a small version of this low wall, which gives you literally zero advantages over the normal low wall. However, it's a bit more awkward to edit. I think we all know this is a useless tier edit. There's also almost no scenario where choosing an arch to pre-edit is useful. It's awkward to select the tiles and it leaves you completely exposed. A low wall or a left wall are always better when pre-editing, so outside of just getting a nice TikTok clip, this is entirely useless. With that being said, the side left wall is another edit that is mainly used for pre-editing. When pre-editing players who are one tile above you from a ramp, you can get stuck on the lip of a low wall. So in these scenarios, by doing a side wall, it gives you the freedom to run straight into the box whilst giving you a right hand peek if needed. Outside of that, the left side wall is mainly used when exiting a box with mobility items, as this allows, in this example, Vino to jump from his box whilst keeping maximum upwards momentum as he doesn't bump his head on the top of the edit or walk into the bottom of it. Great for pre-edits. The right version of this wall offers almost no advantages of the left in pre-editing, as this actually can just give the other player a right-hand peek. Its main use is really when diagonal piecing from above. However, the low wall is nearly always better in almost every scenario, so yeah, awful. An edit I forgot actually even existed is what I'm calling the fat side wall. In theory, this gives you a right-hand peek and a top row edit at the same time. However, whilst crouching up against it, you have minimal angles you can actually even place builds. Given you have to be right up against it to have any advantage at all, the tile selection frame is also incredible awkward and the opponents can just jump over your head. There may be some theoretical applications of this, but I'm really yet to see anything that's really practical. Basically, any other edit is better in this scenario, so that's going in the useless category, even though it does have some merits. Now, my favorite edit of all time, and that is, of course, the window edit. This is undoubtedly the easiest edit to make, as it is literally just one tile, which makes it incredibly simple and fast to make plays with, all whilst keeping you protected. It's also really quick to cone and piece up players through a window edit, as you can just instantly place them. On top of that, it's just incredibly easy to hit shots through this edit. Given the edit is so small, your crosshair already sits where the opponent will be, meaning that by design, this edit gives you incredible crosshair placement. There are of course three variations of the window. There's the middle, the left, and then the right, and each has their uses. In this clip, Peterbot dashes onto an opponent's weak wall, replacing it as he lands, whilst simultaneously placing a cone for him to stand on. Seeing the other player doesn't have a build piece inside his box, he edits a middle window and places a cone before swinging to the left. Because he's standing on a cone, his visibility isn't great, so he crouches to give himself better visibility onto the player's head, allowing him to hit two shotgun shots and then finish off the fight. In this clip, the right-hand window is actually used against Peterbot. As he's aggressing a player, Peter drops down and places a cone to fight from. However, the opponent makes a right-hand window edit and swings to his left, giving him a massive peak advantage. From this angle, Peterbot is only able to hit a 29 damage shot, whereas the opponent is able to hit for 71 with an auto shotgun, as Peter's entire body and head is visible. Of course, Peterbot is still easily able to win this fight, but the window edit was 
nice. Even the left window has a lot of versatility. In this fight, Peter Buck grabs the wall between him and his opponent and uses a peanut butter edit to grab the walls surrounding the opponent. However, they place a ramp over their head, blocking Peter Bot's shot, despite being full boxed. Now, in this situation, many players would probably edit a bottom left three or four and just run in, but Peter Bot edits a left window. Now, since he swung his movement all the way to the left, he is still protected here, despite this being a very left hand edit. Had he done a large edit here, he easily could have just been 50 50 Similarly, he does a left hand window edit while swinging to the left to open this fight onto a player with an 87 damage shot. This causes the opponent to spray at the wall in an attempt to retake it, allowing Peterbot just to make a 50-50 edit to finish off the fight. All three window edits are incredibly viable as long as you're on the left of that window, which makes it so versatile. The beauty is that you can also turn a window edit into almost any open edit very easily just by expanding the other tiles that are around it, which can massively throw off opponents. There's no doubt in my mind that the window is a max piece edit, and it's no surprise that all of the current best fighters in the world use windows so frequently. But there are still two more edits to rank. Firstly, the double window edit. Now, if you're a window edit chad like me, you'll know that by opening a left or white window, this may distract the opponent into thinking you're going to peek that way. Then you can open the other window and go for a shot. Now, this is a 2018 tip. I understand that. But there are some scenarios where this does actually work. And I even killed Peterbot like this, but it's going into mid because let's be real, there's very minimal scenarios where this is useful. Now, you may think there are no more edits. However, I have one more, and that is not editing at all. Now, not editing at all, and instead going for a jump shot, switching your upper angles, maybe going for a sprint shot, a side jump, is often just way more effective than making any edit. Now, of course, this is incredibly situational. However, movement, angles, and aim are often way more important than which edits you choose. Now, if you're looking to learn more about that, you can click on screen to watch why it's impossible to fight Marius.